Welcome to Washington, D.C. My name is Megan. I'll be the one taking you around today. So here we are standing in front of the United States Capitol building, one of the most famous buildings here in Washington, D.C. It's also one of the first buildings established uh, when they were building our Capitol. So if you want to come follow, we're going to go get a closer look. All right, so we've made it up a bit closer to the United States Capitol building. Now, the United States Capitol is done in what some consider a French style. There's not necessarily a distinct front and back to it. Uh, there's more of a street side and a garden side. So this particular side, which is the west side of the Capitol, is going to be the garden side. Now, uh, up at the top of the rotunda, uh, the dome that we have, is going to be a Statue of Freedom. You'll notice that she is facing the other direction. Uh, when the Capitol was originally designed, uh, it was a little bit less of a populous country. And so the statue was facing the other direction. Also, the statue faces east. We'll get a better view of the statue uh, when we walk around to the other side. But I wanted to bring you here to this uh, little patio area because this is where our inaugurations happen. Uh, Back uh, in the early days, they did happen on the street side, but as people became interested and larger and larger crowds came to the inauguration, they brought it over to the garden side here. And so this is the side of the Capitol that you are going to see uh, in all of the inauguration photos. And actually, as we spin around, you can see we've actually got a very, very lovely view of the National Mall behind us with the Washington Monument. All right, here we are on the east side of the Capitol, also known as the uh, street side in the uh, French concept of uh, buildings. Uh, for those of you that joined us, uh, we walked up a hill. Capitol Hill is literally on a hill. Uh, it was originally a bluff overlooking uh, the Potomac River. Uh, here uh, we also though have a great view of the Statue of Freedom. Freedom faces or Freedom greets the sun uh, is sometimes considered a longer name or Lady Freedom. She's dressed in a traditional um, garb of a freed Roman slave. And so with this, she is basically uh, throwing back to the classical tradition. The Enlightenment tradition was something that many of our founding fathers were inspired by. Now, the uh, Capitol has two wings because we have two sections of our legislative branch. We have the House, of Representatives and the Senate. Now the House of Representatives is on the side of the building and basically is meant to represent populations. Uh, it is for sta uh, Each state has a number of representatives determined by their amount of population, so more populous states tend to have a little bit more power. Uh, the Senate is the balance to that. The Senate has two representatives from each state and that gives the smaller states a little bit of more leverage because all states in that respect are created equal with two votes apiece. Uh, a lot of people ask when they come to Washington DC, if you see the flag flying above the White House, uh, does that mean that the president's home? That's a tradition that comes from Buckingham Palace where if the queen is in residence, you'll see a British flag flying above it. That is not a true statement with the White House. However, whenever Congress is in session, uh, there is a flag that, raise, that rises above the appropriate side of the building. So as you can see right now, uh, nobody is in session, but it's a weekend, so I guess we'll give them the day off. 
Uh, but on a uh, day if you come and see, you might see one side with a flag above it, you might see the other, or you might see both. And uh, that means that Congress is in the city and they are trying to get something done. All right, now some of you might be thinking, this is an awfully large building considering that we started out with only 13 states. Uh, well, that is true. We've actually expanded it uh, since it was originally built. The part directly behind me with the dome uh, going out to either side is the original uh, Congress. The parts that then start to come back out into the courtyard were later additions as we expanded the country and started adding uh, more states and therefore needing more space for more representatives. Originally, originally, all of the offices would have been contained in this building, but it's actually gotten large enough that we've started building external office buildings that are connected underneath uh, the ground through tunnels. Now, some people might think this is a safety thing, but uh, this is actually before a lot of the terrorism concerns uh, were extended. Actually, a lot of the members of Congress, their biggest danger were getting into duels with other members of Congress just outside the city in Bladensburg. But uh, the tunnels helped keep them uh, basically out of the weather. So when it was cold or when it was rainy, they didn't have to worry about important papers uh, getting wet or themselves trying to uh, negotiate uh, laws while sopping and dripping on the uh, congressional floor. The dome itself uh, is, a, is the second dome. The original dome, because the original building, was a bit smaller. This dome was actually constructed during the Civil War. Abraham Lincoln was very specific that he wanted construction to continue on the dome throughout the Civil War because he felt that it was an expression of the belief that the United States would become united again and would need that extra space because he was determined that the South would not be able to succeed and would be brought back into the fold. And so the construction on the dome did continue throughout the Civil War. The dome itself is made of steel, which at that time was the newest, fanciest building material. Uh, it's fireproof, which was very important. Uh, the uh, city of Washington, D.C. had been sacked and burned by the British in the, the War of 1812. And so fire was something that was always on their minds because it was, oh, it could literally bring a city to its knees. And so it is steel. It is painted a proprietary color known as dome white. And so that, that is a very specific color and uh, they bring it out to repaint it. The dome actually just underwent a major restoration uh, where they repainted it and touched everything up. And so we now have this wonderful, beautiful, shiny Capitol Dome. All right, so we've gone down into the Capitol grounds. The Capitol grounds uh, were redesigned by the fantastic uh, landscape architect Frederick Law Olmsted. He is the man responsible for Central Park in New York City. He designed the landscape for the World's Fair in Chicago, the Columbian Exhibition, and uh, he worked on the grounds here at the Capitol. Uh, part of Frederick Law Olmsted was he liked a very natural feel that was still actually very, very scripted. And so he was very particular about where he put plants, which plants he put there, because he designed his landscapes for how they were going to look in 20, 40, 50 years, even 100 years out. One of the structures that he installed is this brick structure. Now, this is a very beautiful kind of decorative, uh, great for the time. You'll notice we've got these lovely wrought iron gates, and even the brickwork is uh, very kind of ornate. This was designed as the effectively the original visitor center for the Capitol. When people were coming to visit the Capitol, they were complaining that it was hot and that they were thirsty, and there was no place for them to really stop and refresh. And especially back in the late 1800s, this was a problem because you had women in these very heavy dresses and corsets. Corsets are not fun, and they will make you very, very hard to walk a very long time in hot weather in a corset. And so what we have here is we have drinking fountains. And if you come inside, you can see that we have seats. Uh, basically a place for people to get off their feet and refresh themselves as they are coming to see the seat of the legislative branch of the United States government. Oh, remind me that I'm home. 
Washington, D.C. I've got a fantasy. Oh, that I escape the me. Me. The me I always thought I'd be. You escape the you. Scared to be a nobody. Oh, Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. had enough of me. Oh, you took me to the train, train, and watched it roll away with me. I trace you on the window pane. You say goodbye so stoically. Oh, Washington, D.C. Trying hard not to talk about the lonely road we walk about. What's a girl to do but spend a lot of time away? What's a girl to do but spend a lot of time?